This is so cool. Did you know that containerization on Apple Silicon uses a lightweight virtual machine for each container? Wait, seriously? I thought they just ran directly on the OS. That's wild. Right? Each container gets its own IP, too, so you don't have to mess around with port forwarding. It's like magic. Exactly. And the sub-second start times, do you know how they achieve that? Oh, yeah. They use an optimized Linux kernel that's super lightweight and has a minimal root file system. That makes so much sense. It's like your smartphone booting up, but even faster. Totally. Plus, they have this init system called vminitd. It's the first thing that runs in the VM. I see. So vminitd manages the containerized processes, right? That's smart. Exactly. It provides a gRPC API to configure the environment and manage processes. I love that. It's like giving each container a tailored space to thrive in. And you know what's even crazier? They've made it possible to run x86 processes on Apple Silicon with Rosetta 2. No way. So that means older applications can still function seamlessly? Yep, it bridges compatibility issues, which is just fascinating for developers. It's like having a time machine for software, bringing everything forward. Right? And with this package, the future looks bright for container development on Mac OS. But there are some limitations with networking, I hear, especially on older Mac OS versions. Exactly. It can't do non-isolated container networking on Mac OS 15, which is a bummer. Got it. So applications on that version can't communicate between containers? Right. And while that's a setback, it's still revolutionary what they've accomplished. Absolutely. And speaking of revolutionary, did you check out the kernel configuration options? Oh, they allow different kernel configurations per container, which is just next level. I can't believe it. It's like custom tuning each container's environment for different workloads. Exactly. You can optimize for speed, stability, whatever you need. It's super flexible. That's actually pretty empowering for developers. They have this control now. And let's not forget about the community aspect. They're open to contributions. Oh, that's great. It encourages collaboration and innovation from developers everywhere. I know, right? The project's still evolving, so it's exciting to see where this goes. Speaking of evolving, what's the significance of using APIs for managing OCI images? Oh, it streamlines interactions with remote registries. That's huge for deployment workflows. That makes total sense. It's like giving developers a toolkit for efficient resource management. Exactly. It simplifies building and running containers and also enhances speed. So if I'm piecing this together correctly, it's about reducing complexity while maximizing efficiency, right? You nailed it. And this new wave of containerization could change the entire deployment landscape. Wow, this is blowing my mind. I never considered the broad implications for app development. It's like opening up a new frontier, and every developer gets to explore it uniquely. I could keep talking about this for hours. What's the takeaway for anyone starting out? I think... Just understanding the power of these tools can change how they approach projects. Definitely. It's like seizing control over the software's environment to enhance performance. Exactly. And the fact that it's still in early development just adds to the excitement. Right. And with future updates, who knows what features we'll see next. One last thought. What do you think the biggest impact will be in the next few years? I think we might see a shift in how software is developed and shared like a new norm. That would be incredible. A whole new realm of possibilities for developers to explore.